today we are trying something we've never tried before. We are going to use an oxalic acid vaporizer to treat our hive for varroa mites. Wish us luck. So the first step is to test your vaporizer to see how long it takes to do a complete smoke through. I don't know if that's the proper terminology. So it's one quarter teaspoon of oxalic acid per deep box. We have three deep boxes on our hive. Make sure they're level, pretty much level. And you put them into the well, I guess you would call that. Those of you that are um, familiar with this process and have done this before, please feel free to give us any constructive criticism or correct us on any terminology in a kind and thoughtful way. We would appreciate any help we can get with this. All right, so once you have your measurements in there correctly, you connect the vaporizer to a charger or a battery. That's a 12 volt. It's supposed to be 12 volt. You notice Ryan is wearing a very professional mask. Ryan, what was the rating on this mask? Do you remember? No. Uh, what was the terminology? Uh, Gas and vapor. I, I believe that's correct, right? Yeah. So he's going to connect it to the 12 volt charger and he's going to set the timer on his phone and he's going to see how long it takes to complete because once we have that wand inside the hive, we are not going to be able to see what's happening in there to know that it's finished and we want to be able to remove it as soon as it's finished. So we're doing this outdoor. We have checked the wind direction and we're going to make sure we stay upwind from the fumes. These fumes are toxic if inhaled. You should always make sure you have the proper gas mask on and stay upwind from any of the fumes coming off. Oxalic acid will vaporize and then reform into crystals again inside your lungs if you breathe it in. So be very careful. Make sure there's no animals, kids, or other people around while you're doing this. So right at the three minute mark, it started to smoke and become a vapor. So we are gonna time and see how long it takes for that amount of oxalic acid to be complete. All right, so I don't think I've told you guys, but we did lose one of our hives to Varroa mites. At least that's the best evidence we have. And upon taking it down, we realized that the level had tilted backwards and there was water sitting in the bottom board. So we have leveled this one. We checked the top box to make sure that they were um, had plenty of food, and they do. So we are actually going to get to keep four frames of honey that we had collected from the other hive that we were saving just in case these guys needed it but looks like they have plenty of winter stores and they're already making more we've been pretty fortunate here in Georgia to have warm weather so we've had a lot of small weeds blooming and it has kept them pretty well fed it's looking like we're gonna have an early spring as well so this is looking like a really good winter for bees and in March we'll be able to do a split and have two hives again. So what we do is we put the oxalic acid in the wand and then we insert it into the hive and then we attach the charger but because we don't have we don't want the vapor to escape we're using towels to shove in on either side of the wand to keep the vapor inside it's going to cause a traffic jam at the door where there's going to be a lot of bees trying to come in from their foraging because it's a nice day today but it should be okay for seven minutes, which is what we got this timed out to be to complete the cycle. He's gonna go ahead and he's gonna slide it in about center. And it's about the right distance that once he has it in far enough, it's gonna be centered in the hive. Is it holding itself there? Yeah, you don't want it to fall out. Be careful you don't pull on the cord and 
make it knock out. You don't want to lose that oxalic acid in there and have to redo it. As he gets the entrance closed off, the bees are going to get a little bit agitated at wanting to get in. Shove it in the crack better. You're, you're blocking the, the moisture, I mean the vapor from coming out. There you go. Do both sides. And then he's ready to attach the electric charge and let it start smoking with his timer going on his phone. I can see so much pollen on their legs. The one's trying to come in. So we're gonna make sure we're not downwind from the vapor, but most of the vapor will stay inside the hive. You're gonna see some of it come out the cracks possibly, but these guys have this hive very well fossilized closed, so I doubt we're gonna see much smoke coming out. All right, I'm gonna step back. And let the magic work. I didn't just take a shot of your butt. I am so fascinated by all these bees lined up at the door. They have so much nectar on their legs. That makes me so happy there's so much food here on our abundant homestead to feed them through the winter. That's a really good sign. Makes me happy. This is a very healthy hive. Somebody's got orange legs. I think that's dandelion pollen. Oh, I wish I could look at that closer. Look at that bright orange. I don't know if you guys can see it. Man, that's beautiful. What a beautiful sight. We're about done. About ready to take the wand out. Go ahead and remove your towels, letting the bees go in where they wanted to be. They missed their home. <laughs> And they have so much nectar on their legs. I mean, not nectar, but pollen. Oh. <laughs> disconnect my power source. Yep, disconnect that. Remember that wand's gonna be hot, so slide it out slowly so you don't bump any bees. And it's empty, so we know it worked. <laughs> uh, we were starting to go scratch our heads over here because we didn't see any smoke coming out the top, but. Like I said, they had proposalized every single crack in this hive really well. We had a hard time getting the lid off and a hard time getting frames out to check them. Actually broke a frame trying to get it out. That was how well proposalized it was. What do you think, Ryan? I think that's really cool that I could use this not only to jump off my car, but to help with the bees. Yay! And we have helped get rid of any varroa mites this hive might have had. But by looking at the health of it, I'm thinking our, our number must have been really low. Typically, you do a varroa mite count. There's a couple of different ways of doing that. But um, we were advised that in this part of where we live, you just automatically do a varroa treatment because it's going to have varroa. So we... We went ahead and followed that advice. And if you guys have any advice, if you're keeping bees, let us know down in the comments. Please be kind and gentle with us. We are beginners. We know that we don't know everything and we're just trying to do our best and raise a healthy, happy colony of bees. All right, so we have that varroa treatment done. The standard procedure would be to do it again in seven days and do that three times. Is that right? Is that what I said? Yep, three times. Yeah, and that will break the cycle of any varroa mites. And that's if it's necessary, which, you know, without doing a varroa count, you're not going to know if it's necessary or not. But with the signs of such a healthy hive, 
my gut instinct says we probably don't need to do it that many times but it wouldn't hurt to do it that many times so it's always a good idea to take extra precautions when you can right right and it's looking like it's going to be a good bee year for us we'll actually be able to get a lot of honey next year it sounds like and luckily we have four frames of honey that we get to indulge <laughs> we already took one frame by the way I just wanted to give a big thank you to our wonderful subscriber that was able to send us this Varroa wand and oxalic acid that made this treatment possible. So thank you very much for that support on our Amazon wish list. Thank you. We'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.